like to acknowledge your presence here to thank you for coming because you have believed that's why you come. And this is my presumption today. For those who are not Catholic, welcome you. I hope you can understand what I'm trying to say. For the Catholics who come for years, today's Gospel reminds you and I that the closest to eat the flesh and the blood of Jesus that John is speaking is about John is speaking is about Jesus is saying, I want to embrace your life, and for those who wants union with me, you have to eat me. You know, when we come to food, when you eat food, what happens? We don't put the food in front of you and just smell that, I eat you, I eat you, right? <laughs> we have to eat you, sorrow, right? So we chew, chew, sorrow, it becomes part of our body, am I right or not? Okay? So when it's, God is saying this, Jesus is saying, hey, I offer my life to you. And in the Catholic tradition, in the church teaching, the Eucharist, the Eucharist is a place that you and I have the privilege as a Catholic to eat the flesh and the blood of Jesus, drink the blood of Jesus. But today, I want to share with you, we all can understand the theology of the Eucharist. We can understand our faith. This is very important, that's why in every Catholic belief, this is the higher form of worship because we enter into the life of God and God comes into our life, into our lives as we receive Him in Holy Communion. But I want to clear three things, three things that help us, that do not help us at all to explain God in the Eucharist. Now, many of us will come to receive Holy Communion and we all have received Holy Communion in a different attitude and different understanding. And some of us come to receive Holy Communion and we say, well, no choice, go beyond that. Because if I don't go up, my wife, my husband will wonder why you don't go up today. And so we went with that kind of attitude to receive Holy Communion without experience the break of life. And other group who come and receive Holy Communion because we are so faithful as a Catholic from baby to young, baby to young, baby to old. Uh. <laughs> See? Oh, you will never correct me. I want you to, want to pay attention to what you're listening to. <laughs> so, and we come in a whole set of Catholic teaching that what? Before Mass, we must go for call, call confession. And we cannot have evil thought, we cannot have bad thought, we cannot have anything that's wrong because we must be holy to receive God. I don't know who gave that teaching. Today I will share with you. Come as you are. Jesus will offer himself to say, You need me, you need me, you eat me, you have life. And what does it mean now? What does it mean? It means, it means. You and, you and I have to first of all believe that Jesus is the bread of life, that when we enter our life with Him, our life is different. And we have to believe that. If we don't believe that, we can go to everyday Mass, everyday some of us go for three, four Masses, and you know the truth. If you don't practice your faith, you don't believe you go for three, four Masses, you also commit sins. I won't ask you to put up your hand. <laughs> but that's why some of us find that on Sunday we come to a Catholic worship one hour, one half hours, we find no meaning. The young people here, for those who are 20 years old to 30 years old, I need you to open your ears and listen. I'm not saying the rest of the 30 years old don't listen. Uh. <laughs> but I'm saying I want to target this group 20 to 30 years old. Now I can ask those of between 20 to 30 years old, can you put up your hand at least and know where you're standing? 20 to 30. <laughs> Not too many people. Hey, <laughs> okay, I should have put up my hand. I'm already a <laughs> Why I want to target this group? We have this group of people who are so highly intellectual and so busy with their building of their career. Very difficult for them 
to find faith, and they find that hey, coming to mass, coming to them, I have no meaning. Uh. Now I'm so highly educated, 20 over years old, I'm earning about 15,000 a month, you know. Why do I need God? The bread of life, that every Sunday you come and receive Holy Communion. Today, let us come with the right attitude. It's okay to come receive when you're lying out. Today, the whole week, you experience that your, your life is like shit. You're in pain, you're in sorrow. You find it so difficult that your husband one whole week has become a pain to you. You come with the unforgiveness in your heart. You need the bread of life. Even though at this point of time I'm talking to you, you cannot forgive somebody. You need the bread of life. Why? You come only communicate in the kind of disposition. You come and say, Lord, as I receive you today, bread of life strengthen me that I can forgive my husband. Bread of life strengthen me that this whole way I've been hurt. I have no direction, I don't know what to do. Bread of life, give me the wisdom. And that's what God wants. God doesn't want you to run away from Him just because you have bad thoughts. Just because you're coming to church to say, what? See the woman next to you who are so sexy now, suddenly I cannot receive what it could mean I'm thinking of sex only. <laughs> God wants you, even in the moment that you are confused, Moment in your life, we are not so called living a Christian life. God wants you to come and say, with humility, with repentance, Lord, I want to surrender my life to you. For people who have made mistakes in their lives, you may be in prison for many years, come up, or whatever things that now you're struggling with, sins in your life. You receive the bread of life by saying, Lord, I have learned my mistake. Give me the grace and strength not to fall into sins again. The bread of life is not for holy people who spend 10 hours praying. I don't do that, you know. Sometimes I feel like stepping capo Catholic. Go back and tell people you cannot receive holy communion because you did not fast one hour. The church encourages you to pass one hour before Holy Communion. You must understand the spirit of it. If you are sick, you not fast. If you are sick, they say fast, most likely you will end up dead. <laughs> then you should not. You should get ready to prepare for the funeral rites. <laughs> God really loved us. That's why He gave us the tangible sign of bread and wine to become His body and blood that we can receive it. But most of us who live our faith, understand the theology, but in practice, we don't know what to do with the bread of life. We can't body of Christ. Amen. Then go home. After the mass cup up, Jack will be on here. Well, loud. He said the bread of life we receive. The mass come up a bit here and there. So the bread of life come me down, come me down. <laughs> or Sunday after mass, you have a problem with your wife to say, darling, I wait for you this point. And your wife wait for you in different anger instead of paradigm or whatever at a lucky plaza for sale. <laughs> Breath of life. As I receive you today, give me the courage. Give me the courage to live my life to the fullest. Give me the courage to be kind. For those in their early 20s to 30s, this is a very challenging time because you know why, you know. If you are working, you get so straight up with work. Singapore lifestyle, any lifestyle that you started to work at this age, to pick of career, there's nothing and no stress. Even this age, you join the prison also for stress. Because when you fail, you don't ordain you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God I don't know how I passed. <laughs> So today, let this Eucharist, every now from now onwards, I want to raise your consciousness. Do not allow 
temptation of doubt to tell you, you are not worthy to receive Holy Communion. And sometimes I feel like slapping people and say, we are not worthy, we are not worthy. The more you want to say that you are not worthy, the more you need to go and receive the bread of life. Agree or not? It's one, one hit only. <laughs> so do not look at God that approaching God that God is holy, we have to be holy. Jesus is not saying that. Jesus today is saying, hey, I empathize, I know your conditions, I know you human beings, that's why you need me, that's why I'm coming as a break of life that you can receive, receive it tangibly with evidence that I am the God who loves you, I'm the God who will not judge you, as long as you repent, I'm the God, as long as you repent, I will give you life. And let's live that life. When we come to receive Holy Communion, let us live that life. We may not be perfect, yes, but you and I are not perfect. We can try our best to be a good person, to be a loving husband, to fill our life with service of joy and love for people despite our own brokenness. And for those who are sick, yes, we have some medical sickness, you are afraid of life to come. Lord, your will heal me. For those mentally sick, some of us are mentally of depression for whatever reason, whatever medical diagnosis, you know, calling paranoia here and there, and you will know that you have, you have this tension. Lord, faith of life. I don't know why I'm paranoid. Why I don't know why I always get suspicious of my husband and why even my dogs. <laughs> Can you heal me, bread of life? I just end up with a small testimony of mine. Sometimes I don't feel like getting up to celebrate Mass because I was dead tired, and sometimes during the week, we have so many things. I also feel frustrated. And many times when I feel that I, my body don't want to ready, don't want you. But unfortunately, when you have mark, you cannot call people hey unless you are sick. So I have to pray and say, breath of life. Today my body check up, go young. <laughs> Strengthen me, breath of life. And every time, even though I don't want after the Eucharist, I'm been i I've been I've been charged. I've been charged. I've been strengthened. And this is my experience. If I do not experience the break of life, it's real in my life, my pursuit, and my vocation as the written place has no meaning.